Pontiac 350 versus Pontiac 400. How do you get the little stock 350 to make power like the bigger Pontiac 400? Easy. Just add some boost. Hello everybody, Armature Holder, and today we're going to look at the old adage. There's no replacement for displacement. My question is, what about boost? Today we're going to take a look at two different examples. One, an other guy's a Pontiac example. We have a 350 versus a 400. The 400's bigger, it makes more power, but what if we add a little bit of boost to the 350? Does it make more power than the bigger 400? <laughs> I think you know what the answer is. We're going to take a look at another example. In this case, it's an LS. Could be anything, though. We've got a 4.8 versus a 408. Does the 408 make more than the little 408? Yes, it does. But what happens when we add a little bit of boost to the 4.8? Is boost the replacement for displacement? Okay, guys, we're going to settle the old argument. There's no replacement for displacement, but I think that there kind of is. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Yeah, obviously, it's boost. But we're going to take a look at an interesting, in fact, a couple of interesting examples. First off, we're starting off with a Pontiac, so it's other guys' stuff. That's right, Pontiac, we're going to compare a 350 versus a 400, and then we're obviously going to add boost to the 350 to make it at least equal to the 400. Actually, it's going to be a good bit better, but a spoiler alert. So let's take a look first. This is our Pontiac 350. Um, I, this was one I took down to West Tech. I didn't know what was going on with it, what, what example it was. I think it was originally, it's a 1969. It has 47 heads on it. I'm sure it's a low compression motor with a very stock style camshaft in it. It had a Edelbrock Performer intake manifold. We put a 750 Holley on it and we ran it with headers that West Tech had there. It had an HEI distributor. It had a few problems with it that had to be solved. Um, s simple things like cap, rotors, spark plugs, those kinds of things. And um, otherwise, it ended up uh, running fairly well. There's some, I have some videos up on it. But so what I want to do now is we'll compare the 350 that I ran versus the 400 that I ran. And then we added boost to the 350 to try to step things up and show you, hey, look, all you have to do to take your, make your 350 a 400 or a 450, yeah, 455, is um, add a little bit of boost to it. So run in this manner our 350 with the four barrel and the HEI and headers on it, basically. And we, we had, because we don't have a Pontiac Mazir electric water pump, we ran a mechanical pump. And I'll show you a video or a, a photo of that. But run in this manner, our little Pontiac 350, stockish Pontiac 350, 283 horsepower, 284 horsepower, and torque was up at 335 foot-pounds of torque. So if you're driving around in a four-barrel equipped low compression 350 Pontiac, this is this is kind of where you're at. But let's see how it compares to the 400. The 400 was a similar thing. Go ahead and take a look here at the test description. On the 400, 400 block, unknown internals, likely a stock flat tappet uh, camshaft. Um, stock pistons, it had 1968 6X heads, 62, I don't know, were they small chamber, big valve? Uh, it had, it did have some roller rockers on it, 1.5s. It had the stock cast iron Q-Jet intake manifold and the stock Quadrajet, a Pontiac one, HEI distributor. We played, it had long tube headers, the same long tube headers I think that we ran on the 350. We played with timing and we, and we even did some uh, metering rod changes and stuff on the, on the Quadrajet, made sure that they're both opening up all the way, all the, you know, all the, all the quick fancy stuff that you do to the Quadrajets, and they both ran real well. The interesting thing is, and this is some, something that I like showing even if we weren't taking a look at, um, the boost angle here, but if we take a look, a 400 is just better than a 350. If you, if you take a look at the stuff that I did on the 302 and the 327 and the 350 Chevys, you take a look that as we stepped up in displacement, we stepped up, especially in low speed torque. And we're seeing that here. I mean, we went, we went from 335 or 36 foot pounds of torque with the 400 up to 412. So we went up, we jumped up in torque quite a bit. And the 400 might have had a little bit higher compression if it did good on that. It did, certainly didn't seem to have too much more camshaft because they're making peak power, you know, in similar RPM ranges. Maybe a little bit higher on the 400. The 400 had the Q-Jet intake manifold and the Q-Jet carburetor, which worked very well. 
um, maybe even better than the performer. So there are some differences. You guys let me know in the comments what you think, what, what's going on here. We have an unknown camshaft and we have unknown compression on both of them. So it's really going to be kind of a difficult to deal. But it's an interesting comparison. 350 versus 400. The 400 is going to be better basically everywhere. It's going to have more torque. It's going to have more power if we equip them in a similar manner, obviously, if we offset things. But the important thing is, how do we make our 350 run like a 400? Even if we were to add cylinder head and camshaft and stuff, we could get it to make more power than this 400, certainly. But it would not make it. It would almost never make the same low speed power. So yeah, how do we do that? Well, it's it's really it's really kind of simple. All we have to do. We added boost, and when we added boost, you know, we're all, we're up at 400 horsepower instead of. 340 something for the 400 and then we added uh, actually we did a little bit of tuning which also added another half pound or so of boost and then all of a sudden we're up over 400 413 horsepower torque is way up as well relatively speaking 475 foot pounds i'll go ahead and move myself down here so we can kind of see it i'm going to get rid of one of the pre-tune uh, turbo combinations but you can see 350, 400 turbo, so <laughs> boost obviously is a pretty good replacement for displacement. Now you might be thinking, yeah, Richard, but what happens if we add like six, seven pounds like we're running here? What if we add that to the 400? Well, that would be our next step up, obviously. And then if we made each one of these combinations even better NA and then added the boost, everything would be higher. But if you want to take your kind of mild combination and make, you know, big boy power with it, just add boost. Okay, we've taken a look at our comparison between the 350 Pontiac and the 400 Pontiac and then the 350 Pontiac with boost. So we've taken the smaller motor, compared it to the bigger motor, and then added boost to the smaller motor. So let's do that same thing once again with another engine family. In this case, it's an LS, but it works equally well. Small blocks, big block, dodges, all of the things. This works out pretty well. And when you add boost to the thing, it thinks it's a lot bigger motor. And I'll show you a very simple illustration. This is a 4.8 liter. This one started out as a junkyard motor. So 4.8 liter, 706 heads, truck intake manifold and throttle body. And all we did was add a camshaft to it. Now you could pick whatever cam you want. There's lots of different cams that work, not just this one. This particular one is a Brian Tully Racing Stage 2 Turbo Cam. Quite honestly, probably would not be the cam that I would pick for this. I think it's a little big for this application, but it's one that I tested way back and it does work. You could pick a truck Norris, a Chapacabra, a, a small stage one truck cam. You could go crazy and pick a stage four cam and just go nuts and make, make lots and lots of peak power if you wanted to do that. But this is kind of a typical 4.8 and with a cam and headers and run the way that we do on the engine dyno, this thing's 414 horsepower. Peak torque checks in at 364 foot-pounds torque. So not bad, but still, it's only 4.8 liters. So how much power is it going to make? Well, one thing we know it's going to do is it's going to make less power than this motor, which is a 408. And not just a bigger motor. We have 4.8 versus 408. But the 408 has really kind of everything going for it, like the 4.8 liter. It has a good camshaft in case this is, a, in this case, it's a much bigger camshaft. This one came from Crane. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, but over 600 lift, 240 degrees of duration. So more than big enough for a motor of this displacement. And not just that, but this thing also had everything else going for it. It had displacement, it had compression, it had good cylinder heads, it had airflow research uh, cylinder heads on this thing. It had a good intake manifold, it had the fast manifold, so it had a cam, a heads, an intake manifold, it had displacement, it had compression, we had headers on it, we had the proper tune, it had everything going for it, and it made power accordingly. It made 625 horsepower, so really a good 200 horsepower more than the 4.8 liter, and you look at our nice little um, torque plateau here, it looks like a tabletop. 580 foot-pounds of torque compared to 365, <laughs> so more than 200 foot-pounds of torque, more than the little 4.8 liter. But if you're a 4.8 liter guy, what are you supposed to do? Well, the easy thing to do is obviously, because we already have a turbo cam, is to add boost to this, and we did exactly that. Here's what happened when we ran near 9 pounds, I think it was 8.8 .8 pounds. It actually almost nearly equaled the power output of the 408. So the turbo 4.8 liter produced 622 horsepower. But you can see that even from 6,500 and down, the 408 
made more torque. It made more power. Peak torque checked in for the 4.8 liter with a turbo of 534 foot-pounds versus 58, 580 for the 408. So the 408 was still winning technically, even though they made very close to the same peak power. But here is the thing that really helps separate even a small motor with boost compared to the bigger motor. The big motor NA, it's always there. And quite honestly, at 2000 RPM, this wouldn't even be a competition because the big S475 turbo with an intercooler that we ran on the 4.8 liter would not be responsive down there. So if you're going to measure torque down there, the 408 is going to win hands down because the 4.8 liter is just not going to produce any boost down there. But the nice thing about having a turbo combination and the reason that we get them to begin with is because when we're not making enough power, we can easily adjust that. And here's what happens when we adjust it. Yeah, well, instead of running near 9 pounds, we run near 11 pounds. And then all of a sudden, we're making a lot more than the 408. We're making 670 horsepower. Peak torque is right at 600 foot-pounds. So all we have to do to make more power than the bigger motor is just turn the boost up. And obviously, yes, we did not stop there. We could, we could go up even more. There's more power left in that S475 T6 turbo that we ran. We ran, up, ran this thing up over 700 horsepower, 709 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 648 foot-pounds of torque. And the nice thing about the turbo motor compared to the NA motor is it's so easy just to add more power. On the 408, are we going to pick a better set of heads than the Airflow Research heads? If we do, I don't know what they would be. And, and if we did, we would be nitpicking it. Same thing with a camshaft. I tried running a bigger camshaft in the 408 and it actually didn't do anything to power. I'm not saying there's not another cam that wouldn't make more power. There is, but again... We're looking at incremental gains. You could add nitrous to it or you could add boost to it and then you could be making a lot more power. But from an NA standpoint, you're going to be hard pressed to gain a whole bunch of stuff. And if you do, it gets more and more expensive. When we already had our turbo on our 4.8 liter and we raised the boost, it basically cost nothing. So <laughs> we went from 600 to 700. We could continue to go to 800 if we wanted. And this turbo probably would get us near 1,000 horsepower. And we would be able to do that, which is the great thing about boost, which is why guys, when they say there's no replacement for displacement, I think an argument can be made <laughs> in favor of boost. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.